Welcome back, Achievers, to your Easy Achievers Game Podcast for the week of September 15th, 2022. I'm your host, Elijah. Sitting with me digitally today, of course, it's a very nice, very wonderful, very insightful. All right, so Christian, how are you? I'm doing well, man. Liverpool beat uh, Ajax in the Champions League. Round first round, so I'm I'm chilling. I agree with everything you just said. I don't know what any of it was, but I agree. Um, of course, I was co-host of Podcast PXN, host of Large Popcorn Pod that I recently was on. That just went live last uh, this Tuesday it was a great discussion on recent film topics and the 2013 Oscar nominated movie Her, which was a fantastic watch that we had. Can I say, Elijah, I, I had a few people reach out to me privately and say it was a good episode. Oh, that's very yeah. nice. I was very nervous. I don't know if you could tell. <laughs> I, I, I've only talked critically about a movie maybe twice, like in front of other people. So I was very nervous and I was hoping not to come across as an absolute moron the entire time. So hopefully that. No, came I thought across. it was great, a great conversation, in my I, opinion. I loved it. It was so fun. Please go check that out. Large Popcorn Pod. It was really great. I, I, and your format of the show is so nice. It's very tight. It's very eloquent. I very much liked it. It, it you, you definitely made a fan because, mm. because it was so, it was so fun. And uh, I love uh, listening to you talk about movies. Uh, but of course, yeah. this isn't a large popcorn fan cast. Now this is a, uh, this is gonna be a game cast. Let's get into the not so rapid rapid fire for the week, and then let's get into some other stuff after that. Everything's pretty quick here. We won't be standing on anything too, too much, but I wanted to highlight a few things. Previews for First Spoken are out in the wild. If you want to hear more about the game, small research that I did, it seems to be exactly what I thought as from the trailers, as far as people praising the actual moment-to-moment gameplay. But the landscapes and environments are dull. The controls seem unintuitive. I don't have much to add to this. I looked into it. I'm still kind of fascinated about the game. I kind of want to play it, but things that things about the writing and everything like that i'm not too excited but i still want to play because any anytime they do something it looks fun it's just everything else seems like the issue yeah and i mean the the ads haven't really helped no but, you know not at all not at all band edit three also has some previews going out seems to all be getting universal praise it's exactly what you expect it seems like from bayonetta just fantastic praise all around that actually excited me to the point where I need to begin the playthrough. I have not played these games. So I need to play 1 and 2, hopefully before 3 comes out. Hopefully I can bang those out over a weekend or something. But I very much want to play them to get ready for 3 because I'm a huge fan of the DMC franchise. So, like, I mean, it's kind of annoying that I haven't played this. They're they're not long either. You can bang them out <laughs> in yeah, you, about you two said, sittings you said each. It, so. Nice. According to XGP, Xbox is reimbursing people who pre-order Stalker 2 via the Microsoft Store. Of course, this is entirely surprising as developer GSC Game World is a Ukrainian-based studio located in Kiev, which of course suffered greatly during the Russian's invasion. They have since partially relocated to Czech Republic. It seems like just Delphi one of the game is just, of course, understandably in a mess right now, and they don't really have a projection on when this game is coming out, so they seem, as a precaution, Xbox has started refunding people. Um, I don't believe you can even pre-order it anymore. I tried to check. I could not find it in the store. So I don't believe you can even pre-order it ever. So I think they're just waiting for more concrete details from Game World. Yeah. EA and Koei Tecmo announced Monday that they will be working with Koei Tecmo Studios and Mega Force to develop brands, the hit franchise Death Dynasty Warriors to develop the next great hunting game, whatever that means. The original IP will be set in a fantasy feudal Japan. That was about it. It was a press release. It was very fancy and technical, and I read it. Not much else was given, so there's not much else we can highlight about that. They just said there's going to be a fantasy game, and it's a hunting game. Cool. Square did a quick Q&A on some things during an earnings call. I wanted to highlight one specific one. This is uh, a question from an investor. What is your rationale for focusing on the diversification of your investment strategy for studios? Their answer was, the cost of developing a single title is on the rise. As such, owning studios outright means that you will have, can expect major returns. Your downside risk is also substantial. The result of this is greater than expected earnings of volatility. Therefore, rather than investing on full ownership, we want to additionally adopt other approaches, such as forming joint ventures and taking minority stakes so that we will be able to hedge our investment risk, thereby controlling our vol- volatility 
and achieving both growth and optimal balance on our sheet profile. Obviously, they're talking about Marvel's Avengers with everything about this. They sunk <laughs> $200 million and did not make any of it back, at least. Um, so I'm sure they're discussing this. They want to never do that again, I'm sure. So if I was Sony and or Microsoft, I would be knocking on Square's door right now to see if we can, uh, quote, uh, do a, uh, uh, rather than full ownership, we want to adopt other approaches. So forming a joint venture. Yeah, I'll take Square... A joint venture any day and i'm sure playstation is already there on the table yeah and like honestly square probably has more hits than misses they do to be honest like they, they have some big misses but like i yeah they do i it, they're i think they're pretty confident on the next final fantasy game they're of course confident about their ongoing yeah. mmo game that they got going on right now uh and then there's other venues that they're trying to approach they have 50 different jrpgs releasing in like the next six months or something like that like they have a huge profile so i don't think they're too too worried um currently but i think that paints a much better picture about why they're dumping all the studios and ip that they don't want all right uh discord voice chat is now available on xbox consoles i've used it it is very nice i haven't had too many hiccups yet i used uh it for the second time yesterday uh i had a little bit of lag i couldn't tell if that was on my end or via the discord uh on the app but it is working very nice it's it's very nice to be able to cross play talk with people while i was playing with some people with destiny and they're on pc we just joined it our channel that we have on our server and then boom we were talking it's very nice it's it's almost seamless you you do have to have both the xbox app and the discord app and then on the discord app you have to relink your xbox profile even though you've already linked it so you have to do it again and then you have to join the call. Then you have to hit a button that transfers you to the Xbox app that then transfers you back to the Discord mm. app that then launches it on your Xbox. So it's not the most intuitive thing, but once you figure it out, it is very nice and very convenient. And I'm sure like making it more seamless is a thing that's going to happen. Over yeah, time. I think so at, least, at least it works and it's it's on console. I was so surprised that's... it worked. Honestly, I was not expecting it to be that smooth. And yeah. the actually UI is very nice, too. In the party side on Xbox, it just says Discord and it has like people just like it was in a party. It's very nice. I, I liked it. I hope they clean it up just a tiny bit and it'll be perfect. Get on it, PlayStation. Very shocked that PlayStation still is. I mean, gee, oh my God. Sims 4 is going free to play on October 18th. Not much to say. That's very cool. It makes sense because they have 20 different expansions, I think. Something over, like that. Like if you bought all the expansions, it's like 500 bucks or something. So it makes sense that. This game is free to play at this point. Uh, this is just a quick one, and I thought this was interesting. A story reported on by VGC, PS5 has overtaken the Nintendo Switch to become UK's best-selling console in the first eight months of the year. Uh, this was equated to increased stock. Uh, it was about a 46% increase, from, I believe, uh, from this time last year. So they're seeing increased stocks. So that means they're seeing increased sales because they can't even keep it on the shelves. Every time they put it on there, apparently it sells. So. Uh, good on PlayStation. And I think that speaks more of Switch than anything in that they're still outselling these consoles, regardless of power or exclusives or everything we want to talk about. Everything we're complaining about Call of Duty and things and Nintendo just in the background, just making millions and millions of dollars and not caring about any of this. Was, were these reports after Sony's uh, price increase? Um, this was oh, the month brand. of this was the month of um, this is last month. So July. So, yes, this was this was uh, before August? technically. Oh, yes, August. I'm sorry. Yes, this was August. Apologies. Yes, so this was of August. This Got was it. prior to the increase. So it could go down, which is an interesting point to bring out. We're going into this month. I'll be curious if stocks are um, going to be as drained as, as much as they are. I would assume. Right. It will be. Overwatch 2 debuted their Battle Pass. You, Some people were upset that you have to buy the Battle Pass to unlock heroes. I don't really care. I feel like um, as long as there's a different avenue to buy them after the season's over, I don't see a real issue because the game's free to play. So I don't see yeah, exactly they have to make the money at some point. So I, I don't I don't see what people expect. But uh, three new heroes, six new maps, thirty skin, you know skin. I mean, you know, all these battle pass things, mythic skins, game modes. I mean, get excited! It, it begins October fourth. That's going to be rapid fire for the week. And of course, I begin the show with a single question that I ask my co-host every single week. And that is, of course, I said, Christian, what have you been playing? If anything. Honestly, not, not much since I, I, I was 
away from home on a little short little vacation, so I didn't get a chance to play much. But I have been continuing my my recent playthrough of The Last of Us Part One. Yeah, you have. Um, so I think it's my fourth or fifth time overall playing this this story ever, and uh, I mean it rocks. It's it's more Last of Us as you would expect, but. There's enough small changes there that it's it's making my experience hit different. And I've been saying this mm. on on different shows is that like I I know what I'm expecting out of the story, but what Naughty Dog did with the models is really bring out the performances. Yeah, like if I I find myself mesmerized in everyone's eyes during cutscenes that it's like elevating the experiences experience of cutscenes that it it's making it hit different. And not that it's hitting stronger because I know what I'm expecting, but it's it's hitting in a way that's maybe a bit more emotional in moments where I didn't feel like I was uh, really like feeling it as much as I could have been, which has been different and like really exciting for me to, to go through this playthrough. Also, it's like the lighting in this game is fantastic. Incredible. I mean, uh, I, I play this game like off a of gummy just so just for posterity. So everyone knows this. Mm-hmm. And like, I found myself staring at water in Pittsburgh yeah. uh, for like five minutes just oh man the other day i was like playing in the dark and like my flashlight turned off and it was completely black and i like come and freaked out a little bit and turned to shake my controller but yeah it's been great dude uh, again it's more last of us as we'd expect but like it's 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 still a fantastic game it's still my favorite game of all time yeah I, I i echo everything you just said i'm actually playing it as well and i'm about about two-thirds of the way pretty close to the end one uh when you brought up the acting one specific scene comes to mind i was watching i was playing this last night maybe the night prior and we get to the part of the game where Ellie runs away. I won't get uh, too specific, but she runs away yeah. for a specific reason. And when oh, you reach back to her, her that scene transpiring between Joe and Ellie, uh, that is when the acting is just putting me into that scene. The the voice acting from, of course, Ashley Johnson and Troy Baker was incredible. Just them going at it, the slight movements, the face changing the movement even the mouth so like even if you look at the mouths you can kind of you're even getting that acting in the movements of the actual physical mouths and their eyes squinting and the way they're moving the slight gestures when he gets agitated there's so many things when she brings up sarah that is like when he when you have that visceral reaction from joel it's 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 for some of the best in the friend uh, in the history of games in my opinion for me it's it's the small ticks that they've included yep. uh, like on um, people's faces and it's that's been seen specifically too that was hitting different um like ashley not ashley johnson ellie ellie um like she'll have like small puff of the cheeks and scenes mm. like where she's like you can you can tell she's like exhaling more like a bit more of like frustrated when she's talking to joel and then it was like the puff of the eyes like they're they're colored darker obviously because she's like an emotional state right she's like upset about thing that i don't want to spoil in case you haven't played the last of us right i get on that um and you can tell like she's like fighting not to cry and and it's Mm. just by doing something to the model around the character's eyes and like wow i've never really noticed this in the 2013 version yeah or the remastered version yeah it's it it proves to me that just naughty dog is just on a different level that not many are touching it's just magical almost I, i don't even understand how they do some of this stuff like like just the way that how some of the models interact the it, like you said the lighting the the uh, intuitive uh, there's a couple weird things where like they keep uh using the same voice actors for like the enemies and i'm like god i've heard the same person like five <laughs> times I'm like what what are we doing maybe it's a bug or something but i've heard sam regal's voice like five times in this game Dude, <laughs> steve steve bloom plays like everyone <laughs> yeah that's it. like yeah uh, uh there's a couple other people that i could think of that like I, i'm like hearing their voice i'm like all right like this is about this is like the fourth time i've yeah. killed this this dude with the same voice we gotta do something about that but other than that like this game is magical i love it yeah it's not yeah. my favorite game ever and and i think even it being that old 2013 the little things that they change i think it's still one of the best games ever made can can i say before we move on Please. by the way like Playing this this playthrough on you know with part one, I've realized that I think part two is is a better game in, in so many ways that I won't get into now. But somehow this is still like my favorite game, if that makes sense. Still yeah. a comfort game. I I actually so, I agree. Know. I I enjoy part two probably a little bit better just because of the nature of the story and they do something games can only do, and they make you play something that you don't want to, and then they make you do something halfway through the game. 
that either you're going to love or you hate. A lot of people hated it, but I loved it. Something only games can do. You, you play through a person's point of view that you might I not like necessarily it. either agree or you might even hate that person and that might kill it for you. I remember I was talking to my dad about that and he hated that. He said, he's like, I don't want to do this. And I was like, but isn't that cool though that they made you do that? They made you sit there and kind of empathize. And, and yeah. she did something it was good. that made you upset. It was very good. Love that game. We're around up. D23 happened since recording. They had a Marvel showcase featuring some upcoming games. We'll get to that later, though. In this show, I want to discuss the rumored Iron Man game that Jeff Grubb has leaked prior um, being mentioned at the show. So this was not mentioned, but he brought up asking, like, basically bringing up, like, hey, what happened to the Iron Man game? And he answered a couple people with that asked him about it. According to him, however, we shouldn't be waiting long for the title. Quote, Motive is doing Iron Man after Dead Space. A team of former Shadow Border devs will make Black Panther, end quote. Interesting, and albeit rather strangely, when asked if the, the Black Panther game he's referring to is the recently announced game from Skydance Media, being helmed by Amy Hedig of Naughty Dog Bing, he said, quote, no, different, end quote. So not only is, is when Motive's done with Dead Space, which they could already have moved most of their team to this um, Iron Man game, since they're probably in the final stages of polishing of Dead Space, they're going to be working on Iron Man. Then Shadow of Mordor devs are currently working on Black Panther. But now we're going to have two different Black Panther games currently in development. Yeah. And may release close to each other if the timing work out. Very strange. I would have thought Marvel would have said no. I would have thought they would have been like, well, no, someone else is already either to Amy Henning or, of course, of Skydance Media or to um, EA. I don't know why... They were doing two of the same time. And of course, I believe Jeff Krupp because he's pretty much nailed everything he said. Uh, except, of course, something we'll talk about later. Um, I, I don't really have too much else to add other than I was surprised that if this is true, there's two in development Black Panther games. And I'm just, I thought Marvel would have been like, we can't really have two. Can you, you know, you do something else or just refuse it outright? I don't know. Yeah, I would say aside from in the Insomnia games, because I think those are like its own universe and like they've proved themselves that they can make like incredible games using that property. Like yeah. none of this excites me. I, I motive. Mm. I would have really enjoyed it if they would have done like something else, original IP. Uh, I, like, and I think that comes down to like Marvel fatigue with the oh, TV yeah. shows specifically. And like, yeah, we're getting Jesus. almost too many, too many Marvel things. And I don't need like oversaturation in the games market either. Like guardians was cool. I enjoyed that, but like two black Panther games and another iron man game. Like, I don't know. Like, uh, personally, I would I would enjoy more original IP. Superheroes are about to overtake because, like, we have Wonder Woman. Um, that's one off the top of my head. I mean, there's a, there's more games coming. I'm sure there's stuff that's unannounced. So we're we're probably about to hit. I mean, we'll have Spider Man Two, Wolverine. We're gonna hit a, a period probably in about two years that we're getting like superhero games close to every half, even maybe to a quarter year. And if you think you're saturated with Marvel stuff now, imagine TV shows, movies, and games being everywhere. Yikes. Too much for me. I'm sorry. I've, I've also hit the too much. I've not even watched like the last three shows or whatever because it's just too much. Like, I, I, like there's so much happening. I'm like, I can't keep up with all this. Like, please. Yeah. Let's just let's let's kick it back a loop. And I can't believe I'm saying that. I'm a huge Marvel and DC fan from when I was a kid. So like, this is like a dream come true that we have so much content. And now I, it's like a monkey paw situation where it's like, oh, I don't I don't want this much. <laughs> like, I wanted yeah, a lot, but I, right. I don't want so much that I can't watch it. Oh, my God. All right. Now, let's start the actual news for the week. This is going to be a long one because we have several showcases to cover. We're going to be going in depth in two of them, highlighting a third, and then kind of going on the surface of a final one because the last two are pretty old by the time you're getting this. So let's start with the state of play. Now, the state of play happened. It was very cool. I watched it. I think it debuted two days ago. It was, uh, uh, it was like fine. I loved the ending, of course, because we got God of War. No. Uh, uh, yeah, I would think overall, I'm like, eh, okay, that was whatever. I mean, they did, they didn't hype it up, so definitely shouldn't have got excited if you, if you were. I was not expecting really anything from this. So the little bit we got, I was like, all right, that wasn't a total waste of my time, but it was one of those things where I'm like, all right, I didn't, I only really liked like two to three games even on this thing. So, it's, oh, Christian, what the hell? All right. Okay, oh yeah, before we get dive into it, I, I want to say like 
I think personally the state of play was the strongest of all the showcases. I think oh. having the expectation set that it's only 20 minutes on Japan focused uh, partners, I was like, okay, I, I, I think I know what I'm about to get. Um, and then for them to come out still with only 20 minutes, like, yeah, there were, there was dips and stuff. Like, I don't really care about like the VR games that are, that are coming at the showcase here, or I don't think the PlayStation, st- oh, I don't want to, I don't want to ruin what's going to be. No, please, There's a few things that I, that I felt like maybe dipped in pace a little bit, but still like for the most part, 20 minutes, like in and out through so many of these cool games. And like, I'm a, I'm a big Japanese game person, which is why I think it was so strong. Like they came with the sauce they did uh, even with tempering expectations in my opinion like it was a solid great eight out of ten state of play for me i think and i would actually surprise, obviously i think i would actually agree with you that this is probably the strongest out of the four that we're gonna be talking about and it would really only be in contention with the xbox one because the other two ones i just felt like just were just re- like jump back and forth ran- random wasn't really my my cup of tea for most of them um but let's 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 start. Let's dive in. Let's dive in. So they started with Tekken 8, of course, making by uh, Bandai Namco Studios. No date was given. I'm sure this is huge for a lot of people, of course, in the fighting game community. They were already excited when they were kind of hinted at Evo that there uh, something was coming. I don't think someone, uh, anyone expected a trailer this soon. So very exciting. I'm not a Tekken guy, but I love things like that from afar because I love Evo. Right. Star Wars Tales of Galaxy's Edge. This is LMX Labs, and this is coming out in 2023. This was originally released for the Quest in 2020. This is, I believe, like a tie-in with like the the, the Disney World world. So, like, I think you can like play this and like get stuff when you go to the thing or something. I don't know, but <laughs> there you go. DMO for PSVR two. This is made by Resolution Games in 2023. I believe this is being ported to vr because this is already previously released and i don't believe this was already a vr title this looks pretty cool it looks like you're playing like a tabletop rpg but in a vr setting i don't know it looks kind of cool it's one of those games though i need to see more of because it's one of those where the trailer was nice but i, I don't know how fun the game will be uh yeah based off of that <laughs> i didn't really care i, I didn't really care for this one yeah i feel it. i know a lot of people popped say- off for the next one though before we move on to the next one, because I, I do have thoughts on that one too, um, I think it's cool that we're like we're getting like a drip feed of PSVR two games like in every state of play. Like it's reminding you that PSVR two is coming and that it's gonna have a seemingly pretty like hefty library and maybe strong, you know, quote unquote strong in case of maybe those games aren't for you, but whatever. Right. Um, I think all this to say that like I think PlayStation by the end of the year needs to have a dedicated PSVR two state of play, twenty minutes. Uh, give us a price, which is the most important thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, a hard date, not a you know, just like a, a window, uh, and then just go over the library and, and go over the features again, just to remind everyone that PSVR two is coming and that it can it can bang because obviously impressions came out this week and, and it looks like it's gonna bang. We're getting we're getting a little strange with the question I'm about to ask you, but do you think the reason that we haven't gotten a date has anything to do with the possibility of a switch coming out very soon? Wow, that is not a question I thought you would ask. Um, because that's I don't the, believe in I don't believe in a new switch. Mm, do you so you don't believe in a new iteration even or any sort of revisional model early next year at some point? First half of the year, I'll say. I don't believe that. Okay, let me let me rewind. Please, please. I don't den- I don't deny that there probably is one in existence, and that and oh that yeah, I, of course, of course, I just. Yeah. I just don't think that, like, Nintendo's going to drop that whenever. Like, they don't care because Nintendo drops stuff in it and it does right. numbers, not just in the U.S., but right. like worldwide. But my point was, uh, is I, PSVR 2 waiting on a Switch? Because they, maybe they want a date for the I don't think so. Switch or at least a confirmation that there won't be coming out before they go, we're going to come out in March and then a new Switch comes out two months after that or a month after, or albeit the same month. That would be disastrous. But even still, like, why release a iterative console before like any big games are even supposed to be coming out for a, a switch pro whatever switch iterative thing like when the next huge title is, is you know what you know, a game. perfect title that would be Tell me. the wild 2 coming out may breath of the wild 2 tears of the kingdom freak you don't think you don't think uh switch would be ready for a but like sequel to breath of like, the wild why, why not release those together you could you could bundle that together. Agreed. That's what I'm saying. 
I, I think you uh, you don't bundle them together. Nintendo will make you buy both of them. I'm saying. Oh, absolutely. You're I'm, right, yeah. I'm saying for it comes out May twelfth. Uh, uh, Tears of the Kingdom was is what we're kind of skipping ahead here. It was a Nintendo Direct, of course. It ended with a uh, final title reveal, and they said May twelfth, twenty twenty three for Breath of the Wild two, which is of course Tears of the Kingdom. I don't think it's out of the question that May twelfth you get a new Switch. I don't think that is crazy to say at all. This is how it Nintendo does because stuff. It's, it, it could totally happen, and yet I don't believe. I'll take that mm. bet. We'll do, we'll do a bet. We'll do a bet. I bet it will. I think there will be a Switch in the first half of next year. One thing about me, Elijah, I'm a hater. Oh! That's very nice. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> <laughs> next up, Like a Dragon Ishin. Very exciting. I'm, I know a lot of uh, Yakuza fans was very excited about this. Of course, made by Ryu Ga- Gotaku Studios. I think I nailed that. February 2023. Tell me a little bit Dude, about this. this- this is dope. This is a, finally a, a Western release of the Like a Dragon game. Um, remade in Unreal Engine 4 and then talks today of them even exploring doing the like following up their other games with Unreal Engine 5. But yeah, dude, they released another trailer at, at the RGG uh, showcase that happened yesterday uh-huh. uh, called the Ambush trailer, which like really highlighted the graphical fidelity, uh, the updated models and textures and uh, the music that they're, that they're bringing back in, in this game. Uh, and then went over the cast and crew of characters and like this game is like stylish and like so well presented. It looks fantastic. I haven't played this game. Obviously, it's never released in the West, but we're getting it now finally. And, and uh, I, I'm stoked. I don't have too much. Idea. I'm not a Yakuza guy, but I I saw very mu- very many people get excited about this. A lot of people were very excited. Apparently, this is uh, like you said, this is the first time we're getting this spinoff f- series Yakuza of Yakuza right here. Yes. I'm just like a dra- yeah. So very exciting. Good for everybody. also. It's a, it's a little. It gets more confusing now with uh, them renaming the series to like a dragon. So it's no longer called the Yakuza series, but it, it makes sense because the direct translation should be closer to the phrase like a dragon. Okay. So uh, next up, we have Hogwarts Legacy giving getting a, a PlayStation exclusive quest. I hate when people do this. Avalanche Software, February 10, 2023. I hate, I hate when PlayStation does this. It's a very PlayStation thing to like get content exclusive to your thing. I don't know who this is for. Is there someone that's like, oh, I got to buy it on PlayStation now to get this quest? I, I, I don't I don't know, but very strange. Uh, I'm sure everyone here knows about Hogwarts Legacy. I don't think we have to, anything else to talk about from here. I, so do you want to talk about anything about this? Uh, I don't think so. I, I'll agree with you that like, play, play, okay, I'll, I have one thing to say. Yeah, please, it please. I think it's funny that like PlayStation loves to like, it recently and recently online complain yeah. about about uh complain about uh, exclusivity especially with like call of duty and stuff and how like up in arms they get about it and yet like their partnership deals with games all the time are revolving around like exclusive things for them remember destiny when they had hawk moon they had uh, hawk moon they had they had whole quests they had whole yeah, strikes yeah. that were year exclusive you could never get yeah, yeah they had a whole yeah. exotic i was like what is it like i couldn't believe it. i was like i can't so i just don't get these things like it's so strange so strange yeah. to me. I don't know. Uh, okay. Uh, Pacific Drive, Ironwood Studios, 2023. This is a beautiful game. I was very confused on what was happening. It looks like you're a storm chaser chasing... I can tell you. S- like, some sort of ghost storms. Very nice. Wait, please tell me. So, it's not ghost storms, but you're uh, driving through, like, this hellscape Pacific Northwest uh, uh, looking for cryptids. Which okay, that's pretty is, cool. Like, pretty cool premise it's pretty cool yeah it's pretty cool uh i will be definitely looking out for that no day given of course just 2023 uh and we got to look at playstation stars which seems to be like a loyalty program that was clearly gonna be nfts but they did not call it that uh you get like little things for a digital shelf and you get to put like digital collectibles and things of that nature uh cool my my take is that PlayStation Stars has the possi- like the possibility of being cool, with, specifically with it like does. the other stuff they mentioned before, with uh, rewards, with like uh, like Tur- discounts on games and stuff, stuff like the Xbox already yeah. has been doing for a while. That stuff is neat. Uh, the digital stuff is like whatever to me. I don't really care. Like if if there's a way to like present it 
by like clicking on your friends' profiles and like that's neat. That's a cool little like touch to you know to like expanding the ecosystem. But I don't think they they did it really well in this in this state of play. It felt kind of awkward. It's it, kind of very awkward. You're, you're a few for a minute and then all right, catch you on the next. Blog These post. weird about 3D the models, models slowly turning. I'm like. Okay, yeah. this could have been presented better, I feel like. Like, why isn't this yeah. on a shelf or something? That would be very cool, though, if you have a in-game shelf, I put that in quotes, like, shelf, where, like, if I look at Iso Christian's profile, there's, like, a little special edition PS3 God of War edition that you got from the game or something. Like, that would be cool. Or, like, imagine, like, you platinum a game, and then instead of just having the platinum trophy in your trophy list, you could also get, like, you know, let's say you platinum God of War Ragnarok, and you get, like, a cool, like, uh, Atreus and Kratos figure that you can display on your digital shelf. Like, that could be neat. This is, but... this is a deep cut, and I constantly bring this up so I can make fun of Xbox. 2016, I want to say, uh, one of, like, the programming leads, like, gave an interview on how they wanted to change the achievement system, and they have never done anything to achievements since that they released basically the xbox one but they were like they wanted a way to show uh, uh the, the the ability to show off a game based on like how elite you were at it so like there's no way for someone who has put in 2000 hours in like a halo game to show off their achievement so he was like well what if we make it like basically like stretch goals for other people or different ways to earn achievements or something like that and he brought up that idea, and I was like, that was so cool, and then it went nowhere. It was great. Oh. It was great. Uh, this was a very cool-looking one. Stellar Blade. This is being developed by Shift Up, coming 2023. This was originally, I believe, Project Eve, and then it was yes. given an official name. Very cool-looking game. My Instant game buy. Show. Instant buy. Yeah, I would agree, actually, yeah. My game of the show uh uh it is it looks incredible i mean th that's all i can say as soon as they started like moving around and jumping and beating people up i was like yep looks like bayonetta yeah. mixed with like vanquish kind of like very much digging for it. me for me it's bayonetta uh mixed with uh near automata uh yeah but probably somehow, better like more yeah. more of a more of a platinum not platinum a premium experience and like I think this is now a PlayStation exclusive i think if i remember correctly yes. no no date it sucks but like the presentation of this game both They've showed it off three times uh, so far, and now we have the official name, and, and it looks incredible every time. Like the action flow, it looks like it like flows and feels really good. But like the music uh, that's like playing through these trailers, the the story looks really freaking cool. The aesthetics of this game is in general yep. fantastic so far up my alley. And then uh, there's like when she gets deployed on her mission, which is the start of the game, when she's in outer space and she's like pulling out this like laser rail cannon gun. I'm just like, dude. I need this game ASAP. Yeah, anime AF, and I'm down for it. Rise of the Ronin is up next, being developed by Team Ninja. 2024 is just speculation here. Um, it looks awesome. It looks like we're about to be uh, in a very Ronin feudal to Japan era because we're getting like four different games in the next three yeah. years that are going to be dealing with this uh, time period. I'm excited. We didn't get much. So it's, I'm just you're yeah. excited about like, you know, a little look at something. Also, two cool games from Team Ninja. We get Wo Long mm -hmm. and Rise of the Ronin coming mm -hmm. out. One, yes. one in China, one in Japan. So very exciting. Very cool. Very cool. I, I, Team Ninja's goaded. Yeah. You know. uh, before we move on to the next one, did, did we miss one? Did we? I might have missed right something. Before, right before Stellar Blade. I did. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. Uh, Sin Duality, Bandai Namco Studios 2023. This was like the uh, mech. Um, you were like in a mech and it looks like there's some anime little girl helping you or something. I don't know. This this seems very anime though. It looks fun. I probably will play yeah. this. The gameplay I'm not sure about. Just that like just mech resource gathering didn't super excite me. But <laughs> yeah, like, when he's like story... drilling a ore, I was like, what is <laughs> weird yeah. thing to showcase on a trailer. <laughs> That I didn't care so much about, but like the story and like the presentation of the trailer like was cool enough to at least put it on my radar and be like, hmm, you know, if this gets like, you know, good reviews or like good, good press about it, then I, maybe I'll check it out at some point. But yeah. yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, if it's on something, I'll probably play it or, you know, on sale. But it looks very it looks very fun, at least. And if we don't have enough mech games. We got to bring them back. Yeah, for real. There's a new God of War controller that they showed right before the trailer. I mean, it's I mean, instant buy. I don't know what else to say. I, I will be. Is it though? For me, yes. I, now, I are you not driving with the uh, the color or anything? I mean, it's like just it's literally my f like favorite color. Like it's like a very dark blue, 
Very nice. That blue is a nice color. Uh, but I'll say that at first I thought the game, the game, the controller was disgusting. Really? Flat out. I okay. Like, and I then get I, it. It's I not came around a little bit. Like, I came around and I was like, you know what? Like, the blue and the white on it like does look pretty clean. I, I can't lie. But my take is that I think PlayStation could do more with their special controllers. Oh, like, they I think definitely this could. could have been yeah. a, a lot cooler than it actually is. Like, this is just okay for me. I see. I, I I think more broadly, it's like they could do way more than their controllers. Like, I feel like, don't they have like five colors or something? Like some incredibly small number of, of colors. And they just recently announced like gray camouflage, which I'm like, yes. But like, why? Which is a callback. They, it they is. had this on PS4. And it is. And it is popular. Trust me, I worked at a GameStop in rural Georgia. People buy com- camouflage unironically all of the time. So I get it. But. Why is it just one color? Are we really that like far behind that we can't like release a line of things? Like why? Why is it just yeah. one? I don't know. Yeah. Man, I I got I I just I saw some breaking news just now. Uh, is it a uh, fan bite? Yes, I did see that. I could not research it, so I will go over that a little bit later in the show. Um, but uh, yeah, we will. Yeah, I, I'm. If you have concrete details, throw the link in if you need. Um, I couldn't find anything because it just broke when we went live. God of War Ragnarok trailer, Sony Santa Monica, of course, November 9th, twenty twenty two. I mean, what can I say more about this game? I, I was almost not gonna watch the trailer because once it came on, I was like, ooh, do I turn it off? I was like, ooh, I don't, I don't know if I should watch this. And I was like, you know what? This will be my only thing. I haven't watched anything really about the game, and this will be my first thing. And I watched it, and I was like. I could not have been more wow. sold, so I'm more sold than sold on it, I guess. I don't know, but I'm very excited. I have a weird take on this one. You ready? Ooh. You hate it. Before the before this trailer, I was not excited for God of War. Oh, like, okay. I, don't, I, I, I had don't no crazy. doubt the game I had no doubt the game was gonna be incredible and that I was gonna love it. But I'm just like, it'll get when it when it comes, it comes and I'll be excited then. Until then, just not something I'm gonna give it any mind to. They dropped Sony dropped this trailer. <laughs> and uh, I was stunned. Like I thought it was like okay at first, and then like, oh, what are the, the Valkyries are back? Oh, uh, we're like in this like weird space. Oh, the the cam the one take camera's back, yeah. and then just kept going. Yeah. So much cool shit left and right. I'm like, yep. yeah, dude, this game is gonna bang. It was There's relentlessly no cool. Like he throws Leviathan at Mjolnir, and it like breaks, and then, oh my god, are you kidding me? Like, like, the line, so many lines. Every time Kratos talks, I'm like, this is amazing. Like I don't know why. Kratos- but it's so good. Whoever wrote the line, death can have me when it earns when it me. When it earns me. <laughs> yeah, it's so hard. Come on. Every writer was punching their wall. They're like, why did I take her that? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, my God. That that was all from the showcase. We kind of already talked about our thoughts on the overall showcase. To me, good, fine. They set expectations perfectly. They, they came out, hey, tomorrow there'll be a state of play, Japan focused, and then they left. And that's what it was. It was fine. Next, we have Xbox at Tokyo Game Show. Persona 5 Royal opened the show, developed by Atlas. It's coming to Xbox for the first time, October 21st, 2022. Coming to Game Pass. Very excited. Everyone said I was wrong and I was crazy that Persona would come to Xbox. I'm taking victory laps. I won't, I won't lie to you. I'm taking victory laps here. Wulong Fallen nice. Fantasy is up next by Team Ninja 2023. I mean, Team Ninja, goaded. I'm telling you, I'm playing all these games. Like when when I see Team Ninja yeah. on something, I'm like, all right, I'll buy it. <laughs> like that's like, that's also, as easy as it is. Whoa, well long a co-op game. Is it? I didn't see yep. that. That's cool. I did not know that. We can play it together, I suppose. Exo Primal, Capcom, 2023. They keep showing this game. Um, sure. Uh, uh, it you know, cool. It looks like you're like mechs fighting dinosaurs, and it's just crazy enough to to pique my interest. I'm like. All right, once you have like a setup like that, it is pretty nuts, so I kind of want to look into it. So I probably will check it out. Hopefully there's some sort of demo, because I don't want to buy this, really, if I'm being honest with you, right? Because it, it not? I think I it can't was tell. Like some kind of beta or yeah, alpha I think recently? so, but but I think it was like closed, so you, you had to like yeah. sign up or something for it. So I, I'll probably wait for like reviews and overall thoughts before it goes. Just, I imagine it will be, you know, fine. It looks It looks like a fine game, you know? Yeah, I don't know if it's going to be for me. I don't think it will be for me either. Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle Special Edition Arc System Works. It's coming to Xbox for the first time, Spring 2023. Coming to Game Pass. Very cool. Very cool. I know if 
fighting fans love blaze blue and we've gotten different blaze blue games on the xbox but this is i think the first time we're getting the cross tag battle styling on xbox i'm pretty sure so i know this was very exciting for a lot of fighting fans and it's coming to game pass which is even better sticking with arc system works we have guilty gear strive coming up of course another spring 2023 also coming to game pass very cool more 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 fighting enjoy xbox is trying to prove that they are trying to focus on japan and this is clearly a hey we are trying uh uh showcase here and they're going to keep hitting you with them as you'll be hearing as i go through these ne uh narika no no oh my god naraka. i always naraka, naraka thank blade you point. naraka blade point they showcase like a new season that they're doing they showed off like a couple different things the yushan ruins this is made developed by 24 entertainment it's coming in september cool stuff i don't play the game but it is pretty popular. I think they passed like yeah over a million players. Or something like that. It's very impressive. I I played for like two or three weeks, um, not too long ago, eh, a couple months ago at this point, and like it was fun. Very cool. very cool, like uh, combat sword focused battle royale. I thought it was really fun. Yeah, is well, it like I pay to win? But is it like for honor? Is that what we're looking at? Did you ever play that no. where it's like you're blocking like certain angles? Or no, because for honor is like you know match based games where it's like two v two or whatever. Right, isn't it? Kind. Am I confusing that with yeah, the game? Yeah, kind of. I mean, it, it, there is that mode, but there's four v four and things, and it's like a big battle. They kill NPCs and then fight each other. So is is it like this, that? This no. This is very much uh, just a battle Ninja royale. Fortnite. Right? Oh, yeah. got it. Ninja Fortnite is a perfect way of putting that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I. It's one of those things where I'm like, should I check this out? And I'm like, nah. I wait for it like to become amazing, and then people will be like, you have to play this. Nino Kuni is up next. Wrath of the White Witch Remastered. This is the original game in the franchise. Of course, developed by Level 5. September 15, 2022. It's also coming to Game Pass. Awesome. Nothing else to say about that. I never played the first one. I've heard great things about the second one. I kind of want to play it. Never really got around to it. So this is your chance if you ever wanted to play the first one if you were on Xbox consoles. To play the first one. Next up, Danganronpa. V3 Killing Harmony. Spike Chunsoft. September 15, 2022. Very cool. I want to play Danganronpa. I've actually never played one. I wanted to play the Neither. one that came on the Vita. I believe it was the first one. Um, and then Tripper Happy Havoc is on Xbox. I've never, again, never played it. I haven't downloaded it, but I've always wanted to play something from this franchise because I've always heard good things. And it's almost like guaranteed I like it because I just like games like this, but maybe I'll try it with V3. Then they showed a new hero on Overwatch 2. It's called Kiriko, I believe is, is the, the way you pronounce it. Get excited for Overwatch 2, I guess. I, it, that's all I can say. Yeah, I believe it's part of the battle pass, like we mentioned earlier. So we have to buy the battle pass, and I assume unlock her, maybe. Maybe she's level 1. I don't know. But there you go. Have at it, Overwatch 2 fans. I'm very excited for this next one, because I'm a Suikoden fan. Ewan and Chronicle 100 Heroes, Robin and Bear 2023. Got a new trailer, of course, coming to Game Pass. They, they mentioned that earlier, but this is kind of just a refresher. Cannot wait for this game. I hope it's good. I played Ewan Chronicles Rising. Definitely not okay. It definitely was 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 just was just not great. You could tell that they like were kind of making it to figure out the engine, and then you were like, you know what? We can probably sell this, and then they sold it. It's not awful, but it's definitely like you guys were just trying things here because this is bare bones, like bare bones game here. So I'm just excited for this game to come out, and I am hoping that they hit the date. I actually backed this on Kickstarter of all things too. Oh, I, wow. I never do that. I never do that. So that was very exciting. When I saw this, I was like, I have to be a part of this. So I paid for like whatever got to the game. Dyson Sphere program. I couldn't find a date on this because I believe it already went in early access in 2021. Uh, Youth Cat Studios is developing it. Awesome. I love uh, the idea of Dyson Spheres and it's just cool that you'll be able to like make one in this thing. Apparently it's like ultra realistic or something. So like you'll it takes you forever to make the panels and things like that. So very cool. Also has a 10 out of 10 on Steam. Oh, wow. That's very impressive. Jeez. Pal World. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. No, you're good. You're good. Pal World is up next. I don't know what this was. Also couldn't find almost anything about the game in my research. So Pal World. There you go. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is coming to Game Pass today. Enjoy. It's a phenomenal game. If you haven't played it already, first off, what is wrong with you? Second off, please get on it. I believe it has frame rate boosts on 60 frames. So please go. 
Did you say nah? Is that what you just said? I said Christian. I'm, I'm good. Oh, I don't need no. A 100, 100 hour rpg from ubisoft it's but it's thing. but I it's do. but it's good this one's good though um i believe it i'll take your word for it not for me <laughs> you know what i don't blame you Fugo melodies of steel Cy uh, cyber connect 2 is you can download it today on game pass this is a, a game that was out prior but they made it available today and then they showed off the sequel right after uh it's going to release next year uh cool don't have much to say about that one and then they closed the show uh, show with something that kind of leaked already. Deathloop is coming to Xbox. This is, of course, made by our Arcane Studios, and it's coming to Game Pass September 20th. Yeah. Very excited. They're also finally getting it. Confirmed today. Also, it's it's coming with extra content and an extended ending, which I find really weird Ooh, because, like, it, don't I like did that. not like the end. I did not. I did not like the ending of Deathloop. But like, if I have one major criticism, it is it is the narrative, specifically like the final act of that narrative, which is it's just not good in my opinion. Um, and like that's the thing. I, apparently, that's like a thing I learned that is that Arcane just can't do endings. Apparently, uh, I had no idea. And um, yeah, I think it's weird to like. Um, or maybe a little unprecedented to like come back and revise and work on the ending again for like another release. I'm probably not going to go back to it. I can't imagine me going back to this because I had my fill very much with when I played it on PS5. I wasn't crazy about it. I was one of those people where I was like, what are you guys talking about this being like a perfect game? This is a mess half of the time, but it is a very good game. It's very good, especially if you like arcane games. Like You're going to love this game, but I was one of those people when it came out. I was like, look, this is good, but this is not what people are saying. I, I, I was kind of like the outsider on that one, like. I don't really know what we're talking about here, unfortunately, but I know a lot of people like it. So you're finally getting it on Xbox if you missed it on PlayStation or just weren't able to get it, of course. Um, and I kind of agree with you that it, it's a bit messy with the narrative, although I did fall in love with both the main character and who the antagonist comes turns out to be. Oh, the yeah. ending. It they was were great characters. I did. I did. Did I like the ending? I don't know. I I, I thought the ending was fine. It, it did. It did seem like when I was getting close, I was like, how are you going to end this? And the way they ended, I was like, I guess that's the only way to do it because this is just a, I mean, it's a weird story. So like, it, and I think you are right. I played Dishonored 1. They, they are, they don't, they kind of just end, you know, it just kind of ends and, and they're like, that was the game. So, Yeah. Now, I said, Christian, I don't know if you are a Nintendo fan. So tell me if there's anything from this direct that you'd uh, want to cover other than the things that I'm taking out here. But this was basically a GRPG farming game direct here dude so I, I don't i don't think i oh there is one thing yeah there is one other thing yeah so there's three things that i took away we are not covering the whole direct because the show would be 70 hours long i already have so much else to cover so i'm just going to be covering the couple things that i like go read a write up these this thing has been out for a while so i feel like we're already kind of late to the party anyways so i'm just going to highlight some things my biggest takeaway was of course breath of wild 2 coming out it's coming out may 12 2023 I saw some people saying like, ha, it's not coming to the new Switch or whatever. I still think it will. I, st I still think a new Switch is coming. I do not think that is a, a crazy assumption. Wouldn't be shocked if it comes day and date with this fucking game again. That's how they re uh, released the first Switch. Uh, and cool. Uh, uh, my next up, Fire Emblem Engage. This looks awesome. This was actually leaked. We covered it on the show. Uh, and it's exactly what they said. You're going to be able to summon... Uh, past Fire Emblem characters, which is sick. Are you kidding me? Uh, it's really cool. It comes January 12th, 2023. And then Octopath Traveler 2, February 24th, 2023. It comes out to everything except to Xbox. I have no idea how or why, because the first one came to Xbox before it came to anything else uh, via PlayStation. Of course, it, it launched on Switch first, but <laughs> it came to Xbox straight to Game Pass. Now it's skipping Xbox and launching everywhere else. So I I don't understand why it's not coming. It very much agitated me. Um, but uh, what was the game you wanted to highlight, Christian? Uh, I have beef with Nintendo Switch Sports, and I, I have to put it back out there. I went, I so went on a little mini, mini rant on PXN this week, and I, I'm going to do it again here. Um, Nintendo, this generation has been really weird with all their, like, sports games specifically obviously in the mario franchise like i don't think they're doing enough and i want to briefly cover uh the wave three for mario kart 8 is only two maps and like i like i was expecting i at thought least that was weird three. i thought that was weird like, are they all three I, I thought that was like not a lot 
they've all been more and then just to just to say two and available this holiday just is okay not enough their n64 games for Nintendo switch online cool i i love stadium pokemon stadium i love mario party 2 specifically fantastic we're gonna get one two and three that is neat you know playing online like the original games is gonna be fucking awesome and yet like that's all that's slated through 2023 at least like put some dates on it nearby like you know like an idea of when we can expect those maybe um there i'm no doubt there will be more in 64 games uh, coming but like it just felt like not enough and then this season back to switch sports they have to push back switch golf for for switch sports which is fine <sighs> That game feels incomplete, and mm. it feels like honestly a little bit soulless. Um, my one of my major complaints with Switch Sports now is like the fact that like playing games online with people doesn't feel like a fun experience. It just feels like it's like I'm playing this just to play for matches, which is like it should be a social experience. One of my favorite things about like like we bowling specifically is that like. You're there, you're taking turns, you're like, everyone is like watching each other play, and it's like, you're just like there to like hang out, chat, and have fun, and just like enjoy yourself, enjoy each other's company. But bowling and switch sports is like, everyone is going at the same time, you have 30 seconds to hurry up and, and, and bowl and move on to the next frame, and you have to try and win as quick as possible. And like, that completely takes away from what I think is the point of like a social experience. And I was excited for like, to hopefully to have like that kind of comfortable experience come back to uh, golf. Which again is cool. They're bringing back we we golf maps, but you look at the pictures they have for for Switch Sports Golf, and the online play. It looks like everyone is golfing at the same time. I do not want to speed golf. That's one of the reasons why Mario Golf failed so much. Is that the speed yeah. golf was not fun. No one wants to go as fast as possible. They want to have a social like experience, and it's like they just continue to disappoint me. Um, so yeah, that's my beef with Switch Sports. So. I think it's cool, and again, not a Nintendo guy. So if someone in the comments or if you Christian want to combat me on this, I, I maybe. But it, I thought it was clear that it released unfinished, and their sure. up, and their updates are just like them trying to like put the stuff that they clearly wanted to put on the game before it released. They just it looked like they were even maybe they weren't allowed to delay it, or they were like, no, we can release it. It's just. You know, we'll have to give free updates later on, and I'm like, yeah, there's a difference between free updates. I feel in in like parts of the game, like how are you? How'd you not have golf at launch? That's an incredibly popular yeah. game. You didn't have soccer either. So like, what? Um, so yeah, that was my opinion on sports when I saw it like come out. I was like, it was missing like a couple things. You could see them on the map where they would go to so i'm like this seems like it just was not finished and they were like fuck it release it um and then um and i bought it so i'm part of the problem it's fine you didn't know uh and then nintendo 64 just to quickly go over it i thought it was a bit embarrassing where it was like eight games for the next two years and again maybe maybe you're right here like there'll be other games but i almost guarantee that like they're gonna just strip feed this as long as they possibly can get away with before putting more games because i thought i was like there's one two three four five six, eight games for the next two years so yeah, dude. It, it, what like is when people pay for service too it's, yeah so it's not what is the justification here i thought that was i i couldn't i was shocked that they made the graphic i was like you're sh you're you're like showing off that you have nothing coming to this thing and people like you said people are paying a you know, good bit of money for this especially if you have like a family account but, you know, it's Nintendo. They can literally get away with anything because everyone just shuts up and buys the game. So, uh, And then another thing to quickly go over, only because this specific Game Informer article I brought up really quickly shows uh, Seymour from Final Fantasy X. Uh, there was a Final Fantasy rhythm game coming. Um, it's called The Erythrithium? The Erythrithium? Final Bar Line? I don't know how to pronounce that. but Oh, the, uh, the, Theater Rhythm, wasn't it? Theater Rhythm, okay, Theater Rhythm, Final Bar Line. Um, it'll be the first console entry. It includes uh, over 400 songs from Saga, Nier, Octopath Traveler, and the Live a Live series. Very cool. It's very cool. I won't play it, but I just like when things like that happen. I won't play the dozen farming games either. 
No, no. I, I mean, honestly, I was bored to tear. I was like trying to skip that. I was so bored half the time. I was like, where are the like the amount of times I saw wheat Dude. is embarrassing. I shouldn't see wheat that much. We have a little bit of ourselves to blame with like believing the rumors uh, that, you know, that this is going to be a Zelda showcase. Like, we're going to get Wind Waker. We're going to get Twilight Princess. He, and I was like, hell yeah, we're going to hell yeah. To quickly or, jump on that, me. Jeff Grubb was incredibly confident, which is very rare that he's that confident and is yeah. wrong. He is, he was very, very wrong. Whatever his source was, missed the mark by a lot. So I am curious well, why or what happened. Or even like Metroid Prime, yeah. whatever is going to happen with, with those games, if they're going to eventually remaster them and put them out on Switch. Updates on uh, Advance Wars One Plus Two. Where is Advance Wars? I I I'm losing my shit, man. I want to play this game, and it's still not in my system. Not a good direct IMO. I love that they're not even Zelda could have saved it. I'm sorry, not even Zelda saved it for me. Well, my favorite thing is too like they delayed Advance Wars because there's a war happening. I'm like, but the war isn't going to end. So what the fuck are you expecting? You expect this thing to be done in three months or something? It's not how war works. Ah, sorry. All right. Now we have a Marvel showcase to go over that. Uh, frankly, was incredibly nothing, but it had some highlights, I think, in the form I of. I disagree. This really? is better than the direct, in my opinion. Oh, wow. Fuck. I, I mean, at least it was quick, but there wasn't a single thing I'll probably play other than uh, two things, of course, uh, that we'll talk about. Uh, but let's let's jump in. Tron Identity was first highlighted. Looks cool. Dub. Um very quickly did you have a quick i'll look it up after mike this. mike bithel game text-based in the tron the tron ip needs needs love tron like i is a great movie i'm glad it's a cult movie now uh and like i'm just happy we're getting more things in the tron like universe property that like people with talent are are, are doing and i, I hope fan. tron identity ends up being really good and i, th- I feel like it, it might, might be big fan of mike bithel's games so if he mike bithel's this shit up or whatever he does i'm down uh, mm-hmm. the Marvel Midnight Sun got a release date for December 2nd, 2022. Not nearly as long as I think people theorized, thinking what would have happened with the game. Clearly, they just needed to delay it for some internal reason, most likely. Uh, excited. I, I want to play it. I'm curious. I don't think I'll like it, but I really want to. I, I think we I think it, we missed one, but I, I will say this, that, that uh, I, I think Mar- Marvel Midnight Suns um, will, probably, will probably be pretty good. I hope so. Like I, I have faith. I have faith in that game. I hope so. I hope so. I, it's, it's made by the same people who make XCOM. So I, I hope. I have hope. Um, and please, uh, grab that if I didn't miss something. Marvel Snap. This was the card game, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I believe the, the the devs from Hearthstone as well. Yes. Uh, and bro, you say Marvel card game Hearthstone? You you got me in. You do have me in. Uh, you're kind of changing my mind on this um showcase because. Maybe on the surface I didn't enjoy it, but Marvel Snap and Tron Identity, those are two immediate buys. So maybe I was wrong about this, but we do have Disney Speedstorm up next, which is clearly just a kart racer. So it's just, you know, they're cake on Mario Kart. I'm honestly shocked this wasn't already a thing. I, I'm surprised, but cool. Uh, I think um, if they nail it, they definitely could be one of the big kart racers, especially with uh, the younger audience. Um, I definitely want that. Uh, I'm sure they want that Mario Kart 8 Deluxe money. So that's probably half of the reason they're making this. Okay, I, I got it. It was Disney Illusion Island was announced for 2023. Ooh, wow, I missed and this that. Was the, for sure. This was the uh, 2D uh, multiplayer like platformer that looks like akin to like something like the, the what was it, Rayman Legends? Like the, the Ubisoft game? Oh, um, got it. And okay. the art style is like very much like uh, the original like Mickey Mouse uh, and Friends and like it. Like the art style alone is what I, what I think uh, really piques my interest in this game. Like it looks like a, again Rayman Cuphead type game, two D platformer with friends. Uh, it could be neat. Next up, we have Avatar Reckoning. This is gonna be this is described as an MMO RPG shooter game on mobile. The these uh, shooting games are getting very popular on mobile. With of course Call of Duty Mobile, Ubisoft. We'll talk about later. Trying to get a bunch of their shooting games on there. It, it, it's it does uh, apex legends is on mobile now too so there's so many different things that are trying to get on mobile in that fps kind of range and this is just an, another example yeah. of them trying to nail it there's also uh, i think three other things that i want to quickly mention as Please. well that was also in the showcase 
Uh, Aliens Dark Descent. We got a new look at that, which is not gonna gonna be a game for me, but if you're a fan of that, will be for know. me though. I'm very excited for Aliens. Yeah. Damn, I must have missed a lot uh, of things. I apologize, Achievers. I must have gone off something wrong or or forgot a lot of stuff because I I researched some of this stuff. But yeah, Aliens Dark Descent is yeah, awesome. The, yeah. Uh, new characters coming to Lego Skywars, uh, Lego Skywalker Saga. Uh, you, I can see uh, Andor from Andor, Diego Luna's character. <laughs> character, <laughs> and then I forget her name, but the Inquisitor from the Obi Wan show. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And then, she's she was cool. Uh, and then also uh, a couple of the characters, and then Gargoyles Remastered was announced. Yes. Oh my God. How did I forget about that? I I, I think I played that as a kid. Um. Very much had fun with that. Um, and then next up, we have Aiming Hennings game. Showed off a little bit of her setting. Set in World War II in the city of Paris. It will be featuring Captain America and Black Panther. That's about it. That's all we got. Very Four interesting. playable characters in that game. Yes, there will be four playable characters and set in two different areas. So, uh, assumably Wakanda and Paris. I, I don't know. Um, very cool. We didn't get much to go a, off of, so this is all. This would all just be speculation going forward. But I mean, if any, if Emmy Henning's on it, I'm I'm checking it out. I have a hot take. Oh, for this game, please. I'm a little bit trepidatious on the writing. Uh, Amy Hennig, of course, makes fantastic games. I love Naughty Dog games. My only critique with Naughty Dog games, with the exception of Lost Legacy, is that they treat their POC characters like they're in support of the white characters. Okay. Uh, the last was part one and part two, like major criticisms with, with the way POC uh, are treated in those games for sure. Rightfully so. Um, so like, and granted, that's a different studio. Uh, but I just, I'm concerned with what the writing team is going to look like with Skydance uh, making a semi Black Panther game in this regard. Um, I don't know. Like when I look at the, the movies, like the reasons why I love the Black Panther movie so much is because like Ryan Coogler and, and the whole writing team understand this has, is a, a Black movie first and foremost and a marvel movie second um and so like i worry if like the writing team and amy hennig like will be able to capture that uh with uh, azuri which is you know t'challa's grandfather um i'm hopeful you know i'm, I'm sure the game is going to be good because she makes great games and, I, and she needs a win i want an, a, a game that she is making to actually come out she deserves that uh but i'm also just like just a little bit worried to see if they actually nail you know, the black side of that character so I would, so hmm, I don't want to say this. I 100% agree. Black Panther is, has to be so culturally correct that you have to almost either heavily train yourself in that culture or get someone who knows the culture well. I think Ghost of Tsushima's developers did this very well. They went to Japan, they learned the style. I they don't were, think so. Really? They got, they, the, they got the aesthetic right. They did not capture that culture pretty well. It was pretty whitewashed. Was it? Okay. I don't yeah. really agree, although I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I know a lot about Japan culture. The most I know about is is through like a, a history podcast I've listened to. Uh, so I think they did a good job because specifically that Japan themselves fully nominated them uh, as like, a, I already blanked on the name, but clearly like Japan thinks that the specific developers did something right or at least have the knowledge to get whatever standing that they got i'm blanking on whatever they got they they got like official titles of something i don't remember uh, but maybe that isn't a good example to ignore the example i get up to maybe bring up a better one then the black panther movie i think is a good example of diving so deep in that culture where you are surrounded by a culture that reflects the character and that's kind of what you need in the Black Panther movie and hopefully, or sorry, in this game and hopefully she knows that. I would assume she does. Uh, yeah. uh, she's a very, I'm sure she's very smart. Um, so hopefully she does know that. Hopefully we get some semblance of this is Black Panther and not, oh, this is like Black Panther from like a random like comic that like had a tie in and it's not like doesn't really feel like him. It just kind of feels like someone like is using the character almost like a hand puppet versus like what a Black Panther person would be. So I don't know. We'll see. Marvel World of Heroes is up next. Niantic is trying to catch lightning in a bottle again, similarly how they did with 
when they launched the mega hit game Pokemon Go. This time it is in the form of Marvel World of Heroes. It's going to be a smartphone AR game set to launch in 2023. Reading from the press release, here's a quick description quote. The game is designed to be a social game experience and puts players, their friends, and their iconic Marvel superhero allies against Marvel supervillains and interdimensional threats. End quote. So, seems like they, again, are trying to do Pokemon Go again. Um, they haven't yeah. nailed it so far. They tried with Harry Potter, didn't work. And now they're trying with Marvel. I'd be curious to see if they can get to the excess that they want. Hopefully it's not compared to Pokemon Go because you're just never it's never that's never going to happen again. That was a once in a generation thing that that happened. I I don't think you can get something else like that. Yeah, I agree. That's a good discussion. That's it. That's it with the Marvel Disney showcase. Next up, we have Assassin's Creed and Ubisoft. My God, there's too many things. I'm going to try and quickly go over these. I don't even have write ups for these because I was pressed for time for for writing up, but very quickly, Marvel and uh, Mario and Rabbit Sparks of Hope, Skull and Bones, Riders Republic, Division Two, uh, Division Heartland was showed for the first time. Looks fine. There's Division Resurgence. It's going to be a mobile game. Whatever. Rainbow Six Mobile. Whatever. Track Mania. Apparently, people very much enjoy this franchise. Congratulations. Just yes. says 2023. Uh, my wife loves this franchise, so very excited. Um, now you get to the stuff that I like. Assassin's Creed Mirage was finally shown. Looks up. It looks awesome. Um, we didn't get gameplay, which I was like, what? We didn't even get a look at what it looks like. So it's, but you nailed me on the trailer because it was that cool. I'm not, a, I hate CG, CG trailers as the achievers know, but if you're going to make it, you better make it look cool. And that was cool. We got a showcase for Assassin's Creed Valhalla, the last chapter, which will close the book on Ivor's journey. Very excited about that. That is a free update. So you, you will just have to uh, download the update when it goes live later this year. Next up, we have the first Assassin's Creed game uh, that is codenamed. So this is codenamed Jade. This is going to be the first open world Assassin's Creed game for mobile. You will be set in China. Uh, wow, what a waste of a cool setting. Uh, you're putting it on mobile. Yes. I could not have been turned off more. As soon as they said it for mobile, I went, whatever. So cool, I guess. And then they brought on uh, Netflix and talk, uh, or brought up Netflix and talked about a uh, Netflix show that they've had and works for like two years now. But I guess they finally have things working on it. Jeb Stewart is the showrunner. Uh, you'll know him from a few uh, from a few Netflix shows, but I think he wrote on Die Hard, which I mean, are you kidding? Uh, so cool. Then we have a. They mentioned there will be another mobile Assassin's Creed game for Netflix. Okay, Assassin's Creed codename Red. It was shown. It looks pretty cool. Clearly, it's really far out. Ubisoft Quebec is developing. No date. Assassin's Creed codenamed Hex. Ubisoft Montreal. We had no date. They brought up Assassin's Creed Infinity. It will be a hub. Put that in quotes. Hub for all games that won't be a game. So like. It will be a centralized hub that will hold all the games. Apparently, it will not be a game, but Assassin's Creed multiplayer is going to be coming to Infinity. So I'm assuming it's going to be a hub with multiplayer in it. I don't know. They didn't explain it perfectly, but I'm pretty sure I nailed that. It will be a hub. Assassin's Creed multiplayer will be coming back. This will hold all of the games and the multiplayer. So it's like seamlessly in this one major platform and that was it i i have a hot take on assassin's creed uh you, i you think i have it. that same hot take that i cannot wait to say go ahead okay okay uh well we'll see we'll see okay well, okay i think first of all i want to respond yes you're right the, the mirage mirage looks cool i think it's disappointing that they didn't show off any gameplay when when we got details Incredibly. of like it is going to be a story focused right. game it's going back to the roots you know whatever that means for assassin's creed then to only have a uh, cg trailer is is a little bit of a letdown because i want to see what they mean when they say we're going back to our roots we want to have a, a yep. narrative driven game uh when you don't show that that was like okay well I, i'm still trepidation on what that actually looks like especially considering that there's also going to be a like some kind of uh remake of Assassin's creed one like, i want to see what these things look like and what that means for a modern ubisoft in 2022 what narrative focused back to our roots games 
actually are. Um, then to finally do the Japan, the Japan location that so many people have been asking for, that is, that is one of the flagship titles. And for that to not be the narrative focus game, for that to be the open world RPG to me as an outsider, who's wanting to maybe go back into Assassin's Creed is extremely disappointing because I do not want another 100 hour RPG in Japan. I, 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 just in general, but then to like, it almost feels like a waste of the Japan setting. No matter how cool that art looks like in that trailer, it did look freaking stunning. I want a narrative-driven game from the flagship team to, to right? And it, I don't know. That's my take. Is that, like, I wish they would have focused the flagship title to be the, a narrative-focused game and then to hopefully have been the Japan game. But we didn't. Ubisoft clearly has no idea what to do. I think they are in kind of crisis mode here. What did I... I just named one, two, three, four, five, six different Assassin's Creed projects that will most likely all launch in the next four to five years. Yeah. Wow, what is happening? That is way too much. Way too much. What is ha why? What what's going on? Why are we going back to this model every year we're getting a new thing? I don't want that. That did not work out when we did it last time. And that tells me that I think Ubisoft is not in a great place either financially or idea-wise or maybe no one's helming this uh company in a correct way, but when 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 your Assassin's Creed celebration was announcing like six, seven different projects, I'm like, whoa, that's a bit much, man. Hopefully this is more spread out than my fear because I do not want to go back to year releases. It didn't work. I do not want that. Ubisoft just does it. They, are, they can't call of duty this. They just don't have that many people, the talent. They can't do it. They cannot have perfect three-year cycles on every game. They, 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 they're not going to get it to work. I don't understand the focusing on mobile. Maybe that's just working out for them. I don't know. Uh, I don't know why you would. I don't. I don't even know why this is here. I don't care about mobile, so I, I was very confused on why that kept coming up. Maybe these will be good. Maybe there is an audience for these things, and I'm just kind of stuck in my ways. Just because I, I I hate mobile games. I just don't like them. They never are fun. I've never played one where. It was fun, aside from maybe three games that I can think of off the top of my head. So, my reaction is Assassin's Creed Mirage looks cool. Red and Hex look cool. But we didn't get any other information that we already didn't know from it. It was really just a look at this stuff. And then they, they shoved Jade, which is a mobile game that's being made as an open world game, which I'm like, how does that work on mobile? I don't know. I don't know. I feel like I'm just going to kick at that horse here. I, f I just don't understand what was going on. Very, very strange. Very strange. I feel like they're lost. I don't know. Let's move on. EA, EA CEO Andrew Wilson gave a talk at a Goldman Sachs conference, which is what... Jesus, is that the, is, is that the gross thing I have said in a while? Theorizing the future of in-game content will be driven by player creation. Now, I won't be dwelling heavily into this, but go check out some more of the highlights if you want to on Axios. So there's a couple of places that you can check. I believe IGN also did a pretty good write-up of this, too. What I want to cover are two things. Let's start with some of the most interesting points. During his speech, he said, quote, On a 5-10 to 10 year horizon, what we expect to see and what we've started to see today is that there will be a creation of new things that will fit right next to the worlds that we create, and people will move friction frictionlessly between those two things, end quote. Then he gets into the financial side of what EA can expect from this increase. Quote, increases in playing time and, uh, sorry, increases in playing time are then expected to boost EA's revenue. That's because the company's games, like many in the industry, are designed to offer players more in-game content to buy for weeks and months after release. Minutes engaged and money spent correlates almost to a one-to-one -one basis, Wilson said. So whether we create the content on our community, or sorry, whether we create the content or our community creates the content, provided it's high quality, provided it's engaging, 
it represents an extraordinary opportunity for us. About 20% of EA gamers already create content for its games, and 50% of the player base uses player made content. Listen, it estimates. End quote. Now, before we get into the second, I want to briefly sit on this. What did you think from this talk? I thought the most interesting part was, first off, minutes engaged and money spent correlates to an almost one-to-one -one basis. I find that incredibly hard to believe because that is just going to be... That, that may be percentage-wise in the back end it works out via whales and outliers, but I can't imagine every game when you account for minutes engaged and money spent correlates. But again, if we account for outliers and overall um, percentages throughout the base... Maybe it does equate to that. I don't know. Uh, of course, this man is incredibly smart, so don't take my word for it. But those are just a couple things I wanted to quickly point out. I find I find that hard to believe. And also, in five to ten years, his estimate was that more player content will both equalize versus what they're releasing. I find that hard to believe, too. I don't know. What did you think? Uh I don't know. It, it's for me. It's hard to like really get a sense of like the games industry during like with like business models. Like when I, I, I can't. I, I can't really make ends meet when I'm looking at it from like a number standpoint or in like speculation on like percentages. Like I understand it's necessary and like I don't know the EAC uh, Goldman Sachs. Like that does that just on on paper sounds gross, but like it's for me. It's disheartening. Uh, I don't know. Like, I, I don't like thinking about games as like, let's look at like uh, numbers and like, you know, uh, con like percentages of content that we make versus what player made content. And, like, I understand it's necessary. That like, seems so to loaded succeed, too. But it's it just, it's just like, it's, it's so, it's so much. And I just feel like it, like it almost misses the mark a little bit about why people enjoy playing games. Like, it makes sense. Don't get me wrong. Andrew Wilson, smart dude. Business sense, probably crazy eye something that i i don't have right he has the gift i don't um but i i can't look at it solely like just on a pure business numbers standpoint i don't know yeah i, I think you made a few good points there but i also found it interesting that he says 50 percent of the player base uses player made content I, i'm very curious where that comes from is he including maybe mods as well is he including maybe. something like that because over he's saying close to 50 so one in two people are using some sort of modification or a player made content in something that seems so hard to believe, but you know, maybe I'm just not thinking broad enough. Maybe they're including like Madden or something or things of this nature. I don't know, but there's just a couple things I thought was like, are you just inflating things? Cause this is, just doesn't work out right. Maybe you're just being very, uh, yeah. Uh, loose with numbers because you know, you're that I mean, golden sacks. It is a, pretty big deal when you when you could talk there this this is easily a three right. figure gig that this man got so i don't know but i wanted to bring it I up think, because i thought it was an interesting thing that it did happen i think the most interesting thing about that number though is that like if at some point you're able, somehow able to get like works like it's like, i'm just saying steam workshop just for the yeah. sake of it but like, yeah, if yeah. you're able to get like mods running on console that would probably be the one of the biggest shifts in gaming We'll ever see if that ever yeah. happens in some form or another because I, he is right like you look on twitter you get like you know a game a sony game comes to pc and we're getting shrek and kermit the frog uh swinging around this the yeah. city in new york as spider-man like he's on to something for sure yeah i i don't think he's he's definitely wrong it's the numbers sound very strange now let's get I, to this oh, meant, please please are you going to the the, the next item or the y twitter thing uh the next the well yeah yes those are both yes i'm going to the twitter thing Okay, good, okay. Via Steven Tatuilla on Twitter. This is a highlight of what he said here. Now, this is what Steven Tatillo says via his Twitter. Quote, who do you think EA CEO Andrew Wilson is talking about when he shares this warning he gives to his team? Uh, and this is insert quote. So, never underestimate these giant companies that have innovative DNA monol uh, monolip... Oh my God, I'm struggling today monopolistic tendencies and deep pockets we always have to ask ourselves what happens if they get it right and will even more is there end quote sorry and even more interestingly sean Layden himself ex-ceo of playstation studios or ex-head i guess sean Layden 
responds, quote, I think you already know. End quote. This is mainly... Is thing Xbox? So that is a good question. Who do you think this is a dig at? Now, it's very broad, very purposely, from Sean Layden's point of view, uh, because I'm sure he he does not want, first off, the heat, and God knows what NDAs this man has. So he could not be legally allowed to say whatever you want to say here. But I thought possibly it could have been referring to Apple. Specifically with the monolithic oh. tendencies being the App Store in general, maybe? Um, and they do have deep pockets. Now, yeah. ba- shout out to Andrew Wilson because you don't really know who he's talking about, and that is on purpose. He does not, he can't say who it is, although I'm sure he would like to. Um, my theory was maybe Apple. Tencent doesn't just, he doesn't work with this really because, like, no offense to people who work at Tencent. They don't have innovative DNA. They they buy things. Mm. That's really all they do. So it, it's it's not talking about that. He could be talking about Microsoft with Windows. I mean, Microsoft is very innovative in everything they do. And if they have multiple tendencies, they do. I mean, they have. I mean, they they have kind of worked out a monopoly almost with the way Windows is. I mean, when you buy a computer, you know what's going to be on it. And so. Uh, maybe he is talking about that. I don't know. I thought this was an interesting thing to bring up because I, I'm kind of between Apple and Microsoft, and I don't know which one. And he could be just talking about both. He, may, he might not just be talking about one company. It could be, yeah. Absolutely. Let's get to some sadder news. I, I wanted, I wanted, to, I wanted to know actually before that. I wanted to add the. Uh, can I mention a few items that were from the RGG showcase last please? night? Of course. Or yesterday? Yeah, please, uh, of please. Course, like a Dragon Ishin got that new trailer. Already talked discussed that. Uh, like a Dragon Eight was officially announced. No longer again. No longer named the Yakuza That's right. series. It's like yeah, like yeah, a Dragon. Yeah. Um, so uh, that's coming in 2024. And then we also got another spinoff game. Uh, here we go. Where I'm trying to find it. Like a Dragon Gaiden, the man who erased his name, which follows one of the characters from the Yakuza Whoa. series, like a Dragon series. I'm sorry. Uh, I think in between, you know, what happens in between six and seven, and it looks uh, phenomenal. Okay, and that comes 2023. That's cool. All right, what is there something majorly you're excited about, or is that everything you're excited about? Like, all of them. All of them. All okay, of them. I figured. Yeah, I figured. I didn't know there were that many spinoffs of the Yakuza games. So tons. Jesus. All right. Let's get to some interesting news and two things that two, pre- pretty much three stories that are kind of sad. According to Kotaku, things are not all well over on G4 TV, the former TV network turned online business has faced some large layoffs somewhere between 20 to 30 staff, barely a year after launching, according to sources telling Kotaku. The layoffs seem abrupt, although according to one source from Kotaku, depending on the tenure of the employee with Comcast, could see between 16 weeks to six months of severance. This all compounded as it seems there were an all hands on tech meeting with then G4 president Russell Aarons, who discussed the bad spot they had found themselves in financially, which he then followed by setting by setting quote unrealistic revenue goals end quote. Although according to staff, there weren't any clear goals or milestones set by any higher ups or executives. Also, Aarons left G4 last August, being replaced by Joe Marsh. Although. Uh, he wasn't the first to jump ship as Blair Herter, senior vice president of G4, left back in March, signing wanting to be with his family uh, and uh, and more. Then he left full on America and joined Team Liquid as a global managing director. Now lives in the Netherlands. G4 TV started as a television and digital network under Comcast that was once one of the, uh, sorry that was one of the first to focus primarily on gaming, and it launched April 24th, 2002. It found a niche following in the gaming community with shows like Attack of the Show and X-Play. It then closed December 31st, 2014. G4 then relaunched on November 16th, 2021. Before we get into this next boat, we'll, we'll stick with G4 for a quick second. Uh, wow. Um, barely a year after, they're already having to lay off people. Very shocking. Uh, I think it's yeah. clear that uh, I actually unfortunately called this... Um, maybe this was coincidence, but when Blair Herder left, just kind of out of nowhere... I was like, he is basically the reason it's still happening. I believe the son of the Comcast CEO is also a big reason um, that this is also still go uh, that this launched in the first place because I believe 
he was friends with someone. I think he was friends with Blair Herder. Yeah, I think that's what it happened. Anyways, uh, not important. But yeah, G4 TV seems to be in a tough spot. Uh, I was interested to see if they would be able to emulate what they what they did in the past here. Uh, and it seems like they're not working out as well as they thought. What did you think? Yeah, the, th the thing for me with G4 is that, like, obviously in, in the 2000s and leading into the teens, like, they were by far ahead of the game. Like, no one had, was doing, like, video game talk shows right. at all, I don't think. Like they, like, they were, like, the people that were paving the way for these kinds of discussions. And the thing is, like, in 2020 and beyond, like, those markets were saturated, especially, like, during, like considering COVID as well. Like, everyone, everyone is is talking about games in one platform or another online all the time because this is like the thing now right so like they're entering a space that is already overly saturated that other companies are already doing and they have to like is it enough to just bring their old shows back or like how do you reinvent g4 and like that is like a tough ask for them to, to do and for a while like it seemed like they were doing okay like it's like it, it was fun to like feel nostalgic and 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 watch the new version of attack of the show right see the new cast austin creed you know fiona um and like again, those I don't think those people are laid off. It's it's other people no, behind no, the scenes. Or, no, they're far too but important. It's like, you're right, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, but like, are they succeeding to the level that they needed to be to maintain, um, like being like the with like two hundred ish employees? And I guess the answer was like no, like that they they are struggling in in some way or another, and like that sucks. It does. Uh, it's on. It's say, it's say it is what it is. Yeah, it is what it is. It it, it just seems like the financials weren't there, and it seems like they tried fixing it. It was clear that that president was told uh, that few months ago when he had that all hands on meeting. He was like, "You better fix this, or we're just gonna start taking people out." Looks like he tried and then went, "I can't do it," and left. Um, at least that's how I read the situation. Uh, but yeah, apparently it was. Um, it, it, they at least did it in a nice manner, I guess. It, it, apparently, they like brought people in one by one, so at least it wasn't like the fucking weird companies Mass. that just email you yeah. or something. So, at least it was somewhat nice. But of course, you lost your job, so it doesn't matter how nice it is. But uh, I, uh, all right, hang on. Hopefully, G four finds something. Although, I find it hard to see where G four lands here because there's just so much out there. Like, like, like to have that such a so many people gathering on at first like you said and keeping that going is a pretty hard ask usually you don't as gaming companies start out big usually like skeleton crew and then work your way up because you just don't know how much money you're gonna make off of it because it's very hard to you have to be do things very specifically if you want to try and make money and then i don't know if that if you could do that the way they're doing it yeah. And unfortunately, more layoffs. So this is a um, uh, actually Fanbyte. So the Tencent owned gaming news site Fanbyte apparently had quite a bit of layoffs today. So this is breaking news. I'm going to unfortunately have to read this off. I did not have time. This broke as we were going live. This is via Kotaku. Uh, this is written by Zach Zwinson. I believe I, I'm pretty sure I nailed that. Today, today, layoffs hit the respected video game and entertainment website Fanbyte with the site's editor-in-chief and head of media among the list of staff who are now out of work. According to Fanbyte employees, the layoffs were a total shock, with some reporting that they had just worked with some of the laid-off staff an hour before the sudden firings. The layoffs at Fanbyte... Uh, yep, G4. Um, see, the first indication yeah. of something was a misdemeanor on Twitter. John Warren, the site's head of media, confirmed that he had been laid off from the site. Danielle Rinduz, the site's editor-in-chief, confirmed she had been let go. Since then, multiple members have announced they've been let go. Others are waiting. Kotaku spoke to some fan bites. Multiple employees explaining the management is contacting staff one by one. As of 205, at least half a dozen uh, staff have publicly announced they no longer had a job. I mean, they say that, but like uh, Elise uh, Favis, another uh, editor at Fanbyte, tweeted that um, she had missed the call. So they just emailed her and then uh, lost access to Slack pretty like Oof. immediately after. Yeah. So, like that, that seems a little inhumane to go about it that way. Uh, it is ten cent, um, so I would not be shocked right. if uh, they did something inhumane. Um, unfortunate. Uh, I don't really. I don't know. Uh, Fanbyte's one of those things where, of course, I feel bad for people losing their job. Period. It's just ten cent. I'm just so grossed out by them. So like when they are owned by them, I'm like, oh, I, I wish. I wish this 
wasn't happening. It's very awkward. I, I don't like Tencent, and now that they own a gaming news site, I definitely don't want to partake in that. But, again, I still feel bad for them. No, I, I, I hate that when anyone loses their jobs, especially now with inflation and... I mean, nothing is nothing feels right right now. They, everything is getting getting more expensive. The dollar is losing less uh, is is meaning less and less and things of that nature. So everyone's in a tough spot. So you know, of course, I hope everyone bounces back. Uh, uh, what the hell? Uh, sorry, this is something in the thing. The uh, Dominic Terrason just saw what's going down. Best of wishes to all the writers. Doing stay strong. It was deleted almost immediately, but hats off to whoever did this. The last primal cry oh, of indignation. This. They lived, bitch. They lived. Someone, someone tweeted, you didn't take all the keys? Is that what this says? You didn't take all the keys from me, motherfucker. Okay. Yeah, I guess that was a, a slight at the layoffs or something, or someone still had Twitter access after they got laid off, maybe. But um, yeah. that, that took me aback. I was like, who said you didn't take all the keys? I was so confused. Um, Yeah. Uh, and the, let's, let's see. Uh, oh, and there's a, a good thing written at the bottom of this Kotaku article. Fanbyte launched in 2018, though it existed before in a different form known as ZAM. The site uh, and the ZAM network combined at a wholly owned subsidiary of Tencent Holdings Limited, a.k.a. Tencent. That's it. Bummer, man. I like Fanbyte a lot. I think they have a really great, good like cast of diverse editors there, and they have very smart, informed people. So it's, gotcha. uh, it's sad for me. Mm -hmm. Say it with even more sad news. Bonnie Ross has left 343. Now, I'm going to read her official statement because she deserves that much. Well, I had hoped to stay with Halo until we released the winter update. I am letting you know I will be leaving 343 and attending to a family medical issue. I'm incredibly proud of the work everyone at 343 Industry has done with Halo Infinite, the Master Chief Collection, and the Halo t television series, and so much more. It has been an honor to serve alongside the team for the last 15 years and to be a part of the universe that I love. Thank you to everyone in the Halo community for your support. Halo's future... Excuse me, Halo's future is bright. I cannot wait for you all to experience what we have in store and to cheer alongside you as a fan at the World Championship in October. Axios, uh, Bonnie Ross. Before I get into this, I'll read the write-up I have for her. Bonnie Ross started her career in gaming, working on numerous titles, aiding in either developing and or publishing of the games, such as Mass Effect, Psychonauts, Gears of War, Alan Wake, and much more. In 2005, she made it to the role of studio manager over at Xbox Game Studios, which puts her in a position in 2007. Bungie and Microsoft split from working with each other to, to develop the Halo series. Um, sorry, I messed this up. So when the Bungie and Microsoft split happened in 2007, she was in the position of figuring out what to do with Halo now that Bungie is gone. Uh, she was a part of this group to see uh, who would oversee and decide where to go from here. So this, there was basically... A couple groups, I don't know how many, I couldn't find out the number, but she was a part of a group, there was a part of another group, and they were basically like going to pitch ideas on what to do. Apparently, some of her colleagues felt Halo was a waning franchise and looked to contract an outside company to produce new games, but Ross saw differently and pitched what is now 343 Industries. She aided, she was aided by Bungie staff, created the um, Halo Bible, which all future projects could be worked on from there, and then started staffing as Bungie began waning from the franchise and even aiding and developing the last two Bungie-led titles, Halo 3 ODST in 2009 and Halo Reach in 2010. Bonnie Ross had clearly been the forerunner in driving the Halo franchise. Regardless of your thoughts of Halo currently, they may not be where they are if not for her. <laughs> um, upon Bonnie Ross's leave, there's a massive restructure at the highest levels of 343. Peter Heinz will be studio head, effective immediately. Brian Kosky will become the GM of franchise. And Elizabeth Van Week will oversee business and operations. That is everything I have written here. What did you think upon reading this? Of course, this is sad. As someone who has also yeah. recently had a family medical issue, I fully understand uh, what that could be like. So I feel for Barney Ross, although... I did see a lot of people theorizing that this is quite a bit of a coincidence. I don't think they would lie. So I, I don't think so either. I don't think they would use a family emergency to, no, I, I think the, I, I think if you're gonna do any speculation there, it's like she said it at the beginning of the sentence, which is uh, while I had hoped to stay with Halo until we released the winter update, which seems so to be like, seems to be, she, she was, was on, on the way, way out. Yeah. She was on the way. Yeah. Out. But, uh, but then just the family illness, whatever emergency ended up fast tracking that, which again, that sucks. Like that is not the way. Like I'm, I'm sure. Like nobody from that team wanted her to go out in that way, or, no. like so quickly. 
Um, and it's shocking, right? And like, uh, the Halo fan base can be a little, little bit toxic. And you know, people were like celebrating Bonnie Ross leaving. Yeah, I understand why people are excited at the prospect of like on on the Halo side, but like, uh, we got to be humans first and just be like, this sucks for Bonnie. Like, yeah. Yeah, we definitely feel for Barney. She's a big, big, big deal. Ever since that, she yeah. was she's been a big deal really since two thousand and five. Um, reading and researching a lot about her, she she's a fascinating career. I implore everyone to go read about her. She's 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 a massive, massive deal, especially if you want to just talk about Halo, just ignoring everything else she helped uh, uh work on. So, uh, very sad to lose Halo, uh, Bonnie Ross. Sorry, in Halo and Microsoft just in general. Uh, hopefully she lands on her feet and whatever happens um, works out for the better. I will say, uh, going back to the three for three situation here, the yes. fact that they immediately cut her position into three is a giant, giant oversight. I can't believe that. I, I, was she really doing this that, much shit? I'm not convinced. They, I, I, they can't be. It has to be some kind of other reorg where other people were. were maybe. Uh, see, we're maybe it's a business and operations. Maybe right? it's a shake Hopefully, up. Maybe it's a shake up from Halo or sorry, Microsoft that, that they were hope? like, we got to we got to do because I'm reading this. I'm like, was she really working on franchising? Because that means she's doing like. Toys and fucking toasters. So there's just no I, I think I kind of agree. Like, maybe this is just like a way to better manage things but if she really was that means she was doing like an obscene amount of work if this is true yeah. i think i agree with you i don't i don't think she was doing all this i think they just took this Hopefully opportunity not. i mean if she was she's iron man she's fucking bruce yeah. wayne she's bruce wayne with 70 computers like i don't know how she would do that but if if i think you are right i think microsoft took this opportunity to be like we got to figure something out. Like we need this to be led by three people. So maybe we have like, maybe it's newer. I mean, it really could be anything newer talent. Maybe it's younger people. Maybe it's just a different venues of, uh, uh, there's more than one person to talk to about halo. I don't know, but I thought that was the most interesting thing. The moment she left, they immediately were like, we're gutting that. And we're like throwing in three different, um, uh, positions basically pierre heinz is a big one uh you know dan dan was a guest on the show a couple of weeks ago and you know he's the one that let me know that pierre heinz is like the reason why the master chief collection is in the positive state that it is in now because of this man who like pretty much almost single-handedly quote-unquote um kind of saved mcc um and so like i think if you're optimistic for the future of halo infinite maybe maybe you weren't but if you're hopeful that it will be eventually you know better than it is now i think there's really no better option than, than pierre heinz yeah and he has an extensive background i'm i'm looking at moby games now i mean he's been a part of a lot of things so he definitely knows his stuff he's currently he was currently head of um publishing but of course he is different so we'll have to see thank god they fixed uh master chief collection although i don't know how that left in that state to begin with at least it was sure. fixed at least it was fixed all right moving on Cyberpunk is back in the news since the recent announcement of Phantom Liberty, their first and only expansion coming to Cyberpunk 2077. The newly launched Netflix animated show Edge Runners and a comment made by CG Project Red Vice President of Business Development stating Cyberpunk is here to stay. During an earnings call, he was heard stating, quote, We decided to develop one major expansion for Cyberpunk, which is going to take advantage of all the ca capabilities of the new gen consoles having said that we're totally totally fully committed to developing the cyberpunk ip further beyond this particular cyberpunk expansion we put a lot of effort and time into building this franchise and we definitely want to continue to build upon what is what was built right now with new stories new experiences new content basically not just the video game for event in terms of expansions there's just going to be one major expansion however there's going to be new stuff in the future end quote definitely caught himself in an error there that he had to quickly rectify Cyberpunk 2077 was released on December 10th, 2020, sorry, 2020, and was seen as a disaster as the game was filled with bugs, AI issues, and the last time versions basically not running, and much more prompting many to demand refunds and even forcing Sony to remove it from their online store for six months. So you cheer for the animated show on Netflix, Edge Runners. I'm hearing fantastic yes. things. Uh, everyone go check studio that out. Studio Trigger, baby. Apparently it is a fantastic thing. Who's, uh, uh, who's Studio Trigger? Studio Trigger is a really big um, studio in Japan that does like a lot of like uh, animes. 
uh, shows. Uh, they've also did one of the episodes, uh, one of the better episodes, in my opinion, of Star Wars Visions, which is the twins oh. episode. Okay. Um, big shows like Kill the Kill, like they're they're great. Oh, Kill the Kill. Come um, on. Yeah. So I, I like Studio Trigger a lot, and like you know, put put Studio Trigger on on a on a sci-fi property, a cyberpunk property, like. Yeah, that's that's banging. I, I haven't started it yet, but like all my friends that I that I trust, I've all really really liked it. So Same. I'm gonna start it Same. soon. Yeah, I will be starting it soon as well. I for nothing but good things. So I'm definitely gonna check this out. Um, to the, the update though is interesting because like there was also like they had noted that they're working on uh, for next gen only. You know, yep. Xbox Series X and S and PS5. They're gonna overhaul. Um, the cop system. They're going to do a bunch of things, but they're also going to overhaul the police yeah, system, yeah. which is just like a further proof. Like, like this game still needed more time. Like yep. if it was, if it was coming out now this year, it would change like it the industry been, probably. Yeah. It, it probably would have been like a, like received way better. Publicly. Incredibly well. Uh, but I still, I still think that writing is terrible in my opinion. I think, 20, but I'm, I'm going to give it another shot. The writing is definitely, uh, they, they're trying to nail a specific thing. I don't know if they did. I'm not a cyberpunk guy, so I don't, I don't know if that's how they talk, but they definitely say very strange things. And I'm like, what is, who talks like this? But I, I will say the, the most, uh, the best things about the game is when you're one on one with characters. When I'm just with someone and we're talking, the first off, the facial animations are incredible. Sure. The way they're talking and, and like you just stare at their face it's pretty crazy even when you're in a car with them like they're still like very very um uh clear with their emotions and and like expressions when they're talking so I, I, that's one of my favorite parts of the game i had only just recently played it so i played a completely different version than than people did yeah uh when it released i had played it uh, three months ago or something um but uh, yeah photo I, mode in that game banks too i never even i i am not a photo mode guy yeah, but that is so cool good. Yeah, I can't wait. I'll play this expansion for sure, but um, I, I, w- I, I'm with you that I, like I wish I just it, I, even playing it made me even more sad about what happened because like I felt like wow this this could have been like a huge deal and it just it was a huge deal right. in the opposite direction. We're gonna quickly uh, go over this next one as there's uh, we're getting pretty long in the show. Uh, Ubisoft announced a new $70 price tag for their games. It starts with Skull and Bones. We talk about $70. Uh, we talked about that for forever. It's just the standard now, so we're not going to say anything else about that. Uh, stop me if you've heard this one before, but it seems Ubisoft thinks its current course is not the way they should be doing things as related to us by IGN. A Ubisoft press briefing with the vice president of editorial spoke and said their strategy moving forward will be attempting to focus their games rather than on then have broad ideas to try and encompass more people. In an interview with IGN, he says, quote, we want to be okay with making a decision around one game and go, we're going to go for that and we're going to commit and we're going to be okay that it can make those kind of people happy and but maybe not everyone. And that's okay, he said. We believe that a more focused game is better for the people that like that kind of game. He uh, when he was asked if Assassin's Creed Mirage, the upcoming Assassin's Creed game, which is seen as a return to the roots of the franchise, he said, uh, quote, there's many different types of players that could enjoy Assassin's Creed and we're focusing on all of them instead of making one game that is supposed to cater for every potential Assassin's Creed fan. So for the people who want to go back to the roots, we're making a game for them with Mirage and hopefully... For others that didn't get to enjoy that classic when it came out, we're also making a multiplayer experience, mobile experience, a big RPG experience. There's so many different types of elements that we can cater for, and that also exemplifies the editorial vision that we set, in which we're not making the one game for everyone, but we're making a game for you and focus, and we're committing to the decisions that we're making on it, end quote. He ends with, quote, this desire for focus links to another Ubisoft goal that every hour played should count. So, uh, breath, it's not that we're aiming as much as is as much as the depth of the experience going towards make sure every hour accounts for our players and they feel like time will spent and quote i do feel like he is talking uh, uh himself quite into a circle here uh he is stating that he does not right. he wants to be very broad and then his examples were five different assassin's creed games not a fan yeah. of that i feel like you immediately destroyed your own argument exactly with exactly. your own words, my friend. I am so sorry. I'm so sorry. Maybe you were taken aback or something. I don't know. Maybe you were told to say this in PR. You immediately fucked yourself when you brought up Assassin's Creed. That is a terrible example of your point. I do not understand what he was trying to say here. Maybe he's trying to give an example of like, we're going to try and not do like, I don't know, like 
I don't know, Royales maybe or something. Maybe he's like, oh, hey, we're done trying that. Because they've tried a million times to try and nail like this Battle Royale experience. Maybe he's referring to that. I really don't know. But he really did kind of mess himself up in the end there. Where he was like, you know, look at Assassin's Creed. We're going to like try and be broad. Ex unless you're yeah. an Asc not an Assassin's Creed fan, then I guess fuck you. <laughs> like I don't know. Very strange uh, coming from him. Instead of doing one game that does everything, they're going to do five games that each do one thing. <laughs> uh, and and together they do everything, which who knows? Like maybe like on individual on their own, like they'll be they'll be good. But like True. you run into the problem where it's, you're releasing a lot of quantity, and and the question is like, can you produce quality? Yeah, you have to prove that to us. Yeah, and sounds a lot like uh, Ubisoft a few years ago when they were not looking too good. Yeah, I want to say that was like 2016, 2018 era, kind of. Or the struggling, I can't, I can't quite remember. Maybe a little bit before that. Okay, one of the biggest names in gaming, arguably gaming history, Dan Hauser, the former creative lead and co-founder of uh, at Rockstar Games, of course, uh, behind some of the biggest games ever, like Grand Theft Auto and Red Dead Redemption, have shown uh, where he is left to after leaving the studio back in March of 2020. He is joining the advisory board for Revolving Games after that. Uh, after they have had a $13.2 million funding round, as reported on by VGC. Robin Games, founded in 2020, has two studios and is currently working on two games. One being Battlestar Galactica MMO, and the second being Skyborne Legacy, which seems to be an RPG inspired by Nintendo games like Legend of Zelda. The company is also interested in Web3 ideas like blockchain technology, as Re Revolving Games co-CEO said Vyman said, quote, our vision is clear to build triple A quality games that turn heads amongst the best launches at the top gaming forums like Gamescom and E3. <laughs> As the world uh, moves from the developer owned ecosystem to a player owned ecosystem, Revolving Games will be at the forefront of this evolution, whilst continuing to release titles that compete with the best in the traditional video games industry, end quote. Not much else to add here. Dan Hauser is a big name, so I wanted to highlight where he's going. Uh, cool, I guess. I don't know. Um, I, I know yes. people like Battlestar Galactica, so congrats. Um, Skyborne Legacy, <laughs> I'll have to see more. Uh, I don't know. This is an unproven studio, so I'm not too excited here. Uh, I usually wait for a game to come up before I start giving yes. uh, praise to anything. And also, I'm still very, very, very trepidatious on Web3. Don't know what the fuck uh, half of these people are talking about. I'm very wary when rich people tell me they want to make me rich. And you should, too. So yep. uh, that's really all I have here. What do you have, Chris? I, you said it best. Yep. Thanks so much. A little bit, a little bit icky on the outside looking in. Uh, I will reserve judgment until I see what what it is you're actually talking about. Until then, you're just you're just talking. Yep. Just talking, man. Uh, this is a very quick one. Splatoon three, to my surprise, launched to a staggering number of people. So listen to this. Upon launching in Japan, the sequel to the paint shooter Splatoon three has sold a total of three point four. Sorry, three point four five million copies. In its first three days in just Japan. Three point so three and a half million copies in the first three days in just Japan. I knew Do this was a big game. I, I knew this was a big game, Christian. I didn't know it was three and a half million copies in Japan. How could you not? Like Splatoon has been everywhere, like every week. I I, uh, I like, must miss it. I don't know. I was I was floored by this. I yeah. I was researching and I come across a Nintendo was so impressed they did a press release for just this. Just this. This yeah. was a press release saying that this killed in Japan. Couldn't believe it. I mean, my god. Spl Splatoon fans are insane. I Respect saw that there was a in like 2019 there was like a concert for it. I was like, what is happening over there? What is going on? But it, I'm I'm happy for everyone. I'm so happy, um, uh, for for everyone in Japan that enjoys their Splatoon. So go ink people, go go do that. Go have fun. A bit of a error in story structure. This would have been better a bit earlier in the show, but I'll read it here nonetheless. Game Informer, who has been no stranger to losing talent, unfortunately has lost yet another in Andrew Reiner. He was the editor in chief of the magazine for almost thirty years and seems to be one of the last ones to leave from that era of writing. When talking about his departure in a statement with GamesInterest.biz, he said, quote, In the time it took to create 330 monthly magazines, I was privileged to work alongside some of the most talented and amazing people I've ever met. I'm, enter I'm entering the world of game development and publishing at a well-known North American studio. 
I can't say where I'm heading it, but you don't have to wait long, as I'll reveal my destination next week, end quote. Matt, will, Matt Miller will be taking over the role as editor-in-chief immediately. Game Informer, a monthly video game at magazine, started in August 19, uh, 1999, 1991, sorry. Under the video game store Funkoland, originally as a newsletter that evolved into a publication, when GameStop, a large gaming retail company, bought Funkoland in 2000, they were folded into their loyalty program for GameStop and has remained there as, a, as virtually every other magazine has come to a close or transformed away from print media. Game Informer has stayed a print-only magazine while also having, of course, their online feature. Um, and one of their biggest reasons for sticking along most likely is being a part of uh, GameStop. This is unfortunate. Yeah. Not only did they have layoffs, I believe, a few months ago. Not, I believe, I know so. A few months ago. I want to say it was May? It might have been June. Now they're seeing Andrew Reiner left, which was basically the last kind of, kind of, I, I assume, like, the focal point of the whole thing. So let's hope uh, everyone, this isn't too much of a shakeup. I'm sure they leave them in good hands in Matt Miller. I love Game Informer. It's just a nostalgic thing. I hope it yeah. stays forever, if I'm being frank. Although I know it's not practical for magazines to stick around, I just hope it stays. I, I, I have that is such a nostalgic thing going to Rhinos or GameStop and getting a Game of Four magazine, like and walking home and reading it and looking up all the new games, reading the reviews and having such a good time. As a kid, that is that is in my memory. Me and my dad used to collect them all the time. We would have like stacks of them in the room, we'd always read mm. them and stuff. It's very fun, I, very nostalgic. and... Very sad to see Andrew leave, although I'll be curious to see where he's going, as uh, it does seem uh, uh, as more of a um, common thing for people in uh, the editorial to slowly move to game development. Publishing. Yeah, yeah. And my thing is, like, I don't think this is any kind of indication that there's, like, writing on the wall that, like, Game Informer is, think, like, crumbling mm, down. I think, think it's so. just Andrew Reiner's, yeah, it's 30 years, he's ready to move on to something else. And uh, honestly, for me, it's, like, the the like the new blood that is at Game Informer now consistently impresses me with how well their presentations are, not just in print format but in video format. Specifically, Agreed. like Alex Van Aken, the stuff yep. he's t everything he touches there has been incredible, and it seems like it's been like a an evolution of the yep. professionalism there. I can tell he works uh, hard. So I, I respect that. You can tell he works yeah. very hard. I can see it, and I love that. I love the graphics. Yeah. I, and and when you bring up the video format, um, although I hated hated, I I used to work at GameStop as you know. I hated. The way they they used to cut up uh, the Game of War uh, uh, shows, I don't know who edited those, but but like there's better ways to spotlight that. But they they would bring it up in the in the store, and I would always look up and be like, "Damn, whoever made that is fucking great." It, look, it always looked great. Yeah, that's it. That's the show. Now we just have date updates to go over. Right, right on the edge. Christian's got to go soon, so I'm gonna be a little bit quick here. Uh, day updates for the week. We have Uncharted Legacy of Thieves Collection. It's coming to PC on October 19th. More more PlayStation games coming to PC. Not shocked there. Like a Dragon 8, mentioned before, will arrive in 2024 for PS5, PS4, Xbox Series, SX, Xbox One, Windows, and Steam. Uh, we talked about earlier, Marvel's Midnight Sun releases December 2nd. Epic Game Store. This was a leak prior. Don't need that anymore. The House of Dead remake is coming to Xbox Series X and S on uh, September 23rd. Uh, what was this? Oh, and Babylon's Fall. This was an official tweet. It was with deep regret that we we're terminating the game service on February 28th, 2023. That was via Babylon's Fall Twitter. Not shocked about that one, unfortunately, uh, because um, yeah. they uh, uh, we we saw how their concurrence on Steam and there were like 100 people. So sad for them. Although I heard it was a pretty bad game. And that's yeah. the news for the week. Thank you so much for joining me, Christian. Of course, we end the show just like we begin it with a single question that I pose to you. And of course, that is, what do you have queued up for the week? That could be, of course, a game, some sort of TV show, a podcast, a manga, comic book, a book, anything. What do you have queued up for the weekend? I'll give you three things, but I'll talk about one. I just want to mention the first two. I'm going to finish Please. T-Loop Part 1. Okay. Me too. I'm gonna buy some. I'm gonna buy some gummies and play Bayonetta two. Never got around to it. <laughs> nice. And I am watching Moon Age Daydream, the the David Bowie documentary in what? IMAX. Tonight. It just released today. Fuck yeah, you are. I gotta watch that. What is it called? Oh, Moon no. Age Daydream. Moon Age. Daydream. I'm writing this down so I make sure I can. Yep, there it is. Moon Age Daydream movie. Boom. I need to watch this. I love David Bowie. So. Um, and I heard it's fantastic. Oh, is it? Yeah, thank God. I want to watch that one. I want to watch the silly uh, Weird Al biopic. I want to watch that yeah. too. 
Um, what do I have queued up? Yeah, I finished uh, Last of Us Part 1. I need to do that, and yeah, we're going to be doing a spoiler cast. Maybe I can get Christian on for that. Um, that's really it. I want to play Immortality on Game Pass. We don't have anything new coming out, so it's really just going to be me slowly going through things, playing some light Destiny. Mm. Uh, I'll probably get to... um, What was the one game I wanted to play? I'm blanking out, so I'm going to ignore it. Oh, Prey. I'm going to play Prey for the uh, first time. I, I tried uh, starting it twice before. It never worked out, so I'm going to give it the uh, old college try now. But <clears throat> aside from that, uh, I very much... Appreciate you coming here, Christian. We uh we are on the Rager's edge here, so we're gonna hop off here. But this was uh this is one of my favorite uh, episodes ever. We had great conversation. You combated me a little bit, which I liked. I like when people disagree with me because I feel like I feel like people never want to like mix the oil with the vinegar sometimes on the show. And I'm like, no, fucking get yeah, at fun, right? get at me, get at me. I love it. Uh, I appreciate you and all you do. Remember, check out Podcast BXN, and of course. Check out Popcorn Pod, right? Is that I get everything? Anything else I uh, g- give a shout out to? Yeah, to follow me on Twitter at Iso Christian. Happy Hispanic Heritage Month. You're going to see a video from me dropping later today. Ooh, okay. Very exciting. I, he's a great fucking Twitter follow, so please do yourself a favor. Um, he's constantly making me question my sexuality. I'll leave you guys on that. Just oh constantly. Constantly with the thirst traps, man. Constantly. I'm a, I, I, I follow Twitter yeah. to laugh, not question my sexuality, Christian. Okay? All right. I appreciate everyone. We love you, and remember, go achieve.